I believe through technology and thinking different that my disability has in fact become my ability. My weakness has turned into my strength. But by society's definition, having two artificial legs will always be a disability. It will always be a nuisance, a hindrance, and a sign that my body is broken. To be disabled is to be limited in opportunity to contribute to society, the world that we live in. But this is not 10,000 BC, and there are more ways to contribute than just being a hunter-gatherer. In fact, we live in a time where you can have an infinite number of ways to contribute to the world that we live in. And so I ask myself, do I really have a disability, or do I just have to do things differently? This is a question that I've pondered upon and debated with myself, with friends, with family, and society at large my entire life. And I argue now that having two artificial legs is advantageous to my life and has brought with it capabilities that I would not have had had I had two perfect biological legs. I was born with a disability, however. I was born with fibula hemimelia. This is the absence of the fibula bone. They run in parallel to the tibia. The tibia is the shin bone. The role of the fibula is to stabilize and provide structure to the ankle joint. As you can see from the image behind me, as a toddler when I was learning to walk, my ankles twisted, my feet turned outwards, and I learned to walk on the insides of my feet. This was not sustainable and it was painful, and in consulting with orthopedic surgeons, my parents made the difficult and courageous decision to amputate both of my feet when I was 18 months of age. At the age of two, I feel as though this disability was almost immediately solved. I received my first pair of artificial legs. This is the first right leg that I was given, and it immediately allowed me to run, walk, and jump, and bringing with it a new set of life's opportunities. However, being an amputee has not come without its challenges. While this solved the disability in the short term, Technology and prosthetics hardly developed for me during my childhood. One of the ways that we measure ability is in comparison to others. And in school, this is often done in sports. It didn't matter if my leg was falling off on the track or causing me to sink in the pool. It didn't matter what event I participated in, I always came last. And as a result of reduced functionality, and poor design, I was often called peg legs, an indication to the pirate-like technology that I was using. During these times of defeat and struggle, I would often come home from school, walk straight into my room, I would lay on my bed, I would look at the ceiling, I would burst out in tears, and I would wish with every ounce of imagination that I had that my legs were real. My dad would often come in, he would sit at the end of my bed and reassure me that my struggles were not a measure of my true abilities, but a reflection of bad engineering and technology. All I wanted as a child was to be able to run, walk, and swim, just like my friends. I just wanted to feel able. But my dad had this prophecy of his own. He said, one day, someone somewhere will build you legs that allow you to run better and faster than your friends. And if we fast forward to 2017, some of the more trivial troubles I had as a kid have been solved. Through Better by Design, we can make prosthetics that allow me to swim and not sink in pools. In fact, we can design legs so that ankles give me a natural kicking motion when wearing fins. The added benefit of having an artificial leg is that if you're in the ocean, they're shark-proof. <laughs> but even from an aesthetic standpoint, my legs no longer reflect the time of pirates. In fact, I was helping uh, tutor a bunch of kids in a technology class recently, and I asked them to come up with a name that's a little bit more creative than Liam or Mr. Malone. Quite quickly, the entire class had their hands up, asking for help from Mr. Robot Legs. <laughs> this here is a 3D printed prosthetic cover. I would typically wear it under pants or jeans to make my legs look more realistic. But if I wanted to design them to be worn with shorts, as the image above, 
the design would only be limited by my imagination. Turning what would have been a mundane piece of medical equipment into an expressive piece of wearable art. But out of all the legs and accessories that I have now, none have been more transformative than these. This here is a running blade. This here is the leg that my dad prophesied about when he was sitting at the edge of my bed trying to lift my spirits as a child. This piece of technology has given me capabilities that I would not have had otherwise. While the biological limb serves many different functions, the running blade serves one, to make its user as fast as possible. While the biological limb can produce more force, the running blade beats the biological limb on different factors. It is more efficient in energy return. It is incredibly light. And while muscles fatigue during races, carbon fiber does not. I first put on a running blade in my first year of university. I'd sort of just set this audacious goal of going to the Rio Paralympics in three years' time to win the 100, 200, and 400 meter sprints, despite the fact that I hadn't actually run since I was 10, when my leg fell off in front of my entire school during school athletics. <laughs> And one of the first things that I noticed is that this was no ordinary leg. It was designed on the hind leg of a cheetah. And through this technology, in three years, I was able to go from a point where I had not run in about nine years to being the second fastest New Zealander to ever run the 400 meters. My times earned me two gold medals and a silver medal, and the records that I broke were previously held by Oscar Pistorius. As a kid, I always just wanted to be able to run like my friends and fit in. But my dad's prophecy had come true. Someone somewhere had built me legs that allowed me to run better and faster than not only all of my friends, but 99% of the able world. And when I came back from Rio, I couldn't stop thinking about this, thinking about what is the inevitable endpoint of this technology. After all, one of the first users of blade technology, Oscar Pistorius, made it into the Olympics. And the inevitable endpoint is that bilateral amputees will one day run faster than those in the Olympics. Oscar and I differ on how that should be done, but I believe that it should not be done in an event like the Paralympics or the Olympics under rules or regulations. No, my vision is to do it sort of like Bert Munro, who became the world's fastest Indian. To take technology, to take out the rules, and to tell a story about overcoming human adversity. And so I spent a decent part of this year traveling the world. I went up to the United States, the United Kingdom, over to Scandinavia, looking for carbon engineers to help me with this goal. While I was away, I witnessed something special. I witnessed Team New Zealand win the America's Cup. I watched these yachts sail on water like spaceships. And while I was looking at them, I clicked. They're made out of the same material as my carbon fiber running blades. And Team New Zealand, up against Oracle Team USA, had won with limited resources and by thinking different. And so I realized the people who should be building my blades do not exist in the United States, nor do they exist in the United Kingdom, nor do they exist in Scandinavia or Europe. They exist in Innovation Nation, in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Through technology, thinking different, and a bit of Kiwi ingenuity, what has been considered my disability might perhaps have become my greatest ability. Thank you very much.